Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another a live stream. Today is Thursday, March 23rd, 2023. 23-23, right? I like it when the days and the numbers kind of match up like that. I feel like that's a good luck thing. So hopefully you're having a good luck, especially everyone listening in on the podcast, the audio-only version. Hopefully you're having a good run. I know that I've been a little bit slow getting the audio versions uploaded. Um, so you might be seeing like a bunch hit your uh, feeds right in a row, but uh, I'm getting there. I just been just trying to get sorted out. I got a couple of new projects that I've been working on and stuff like that. So just balancing some stuff and hopefully we'll get back to smooth sailing soon. Just like I hope your run is going really smooth today. Today on my run, I was scoping out some hills because I got some like hill workouts planned for the next couple, like maybe not a lot of time left to Boston. But I'll be doing some hill workouts. So I found a really big one, a really big one, the biggest hill that I think is in the neighborhood. And so, you know, I checked it out today. It's it's pretty big. So that's what's coming up. Uh, everyone watching this on YouTube later but not live, welcome to you guys as well. You know, for you guys, it might be the same time that it is for our guest for today. We got Ed Bud coming in here from England. I'm not sure what time it is because we just hit daylight savings time here in the U.S. I feel like they already did daylight savings time. They've been daylight saved already. So who knows what time it is? We'll have to ask him. Here he is, the man himself, Ed Bud. What's going on, man? How you doing, people? It's good to good to see you. Thank you so much for having me on today, Mike. I really appreciate it. Um, it's great to be here and chatting away with you. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe even chatting with you in the flesh very soon. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Ed and I were just talking about it. Um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't like uh, accidentally spilling out like a secret viewer surprise. <laughs> Um, Ed and I have been talking and, uh, I'm going to Boston and Ed is going to Boston as well. Isn't that right? I am. I'm sadly not running maybe one day in the future, mm -hmm. okay. um, but yeah, it's going to be awesome. But getting over to, uh, the States, um, actually getting out of the country to be fair, Mike, cause yeah. it's been ages since, uh, it's been sort of really easy to be able to do that. Um, and to go to the Boston marathon, which is one of the most prestigious, you know, historic sort of events. And I, I would suggest also uh, going to Boston, too, being one of the most historic kind of places in America. Um, there's a lot of history there, you know, that I want to sort of soak up. And lots of, like, American stuff that I want to soak up as well <laughs> that, that I don't have in this town, you know. It's, it's pretty quiet here. Yeah, there's not an awful lot going on apart from, uh, well, there isn't much going on apart from helicopters and some agriculture um, yeah. yeah, so it's going to be amazing to be somewhere big and with lots of stuff happening. So, okay, so what what's on your list of American things that you you want to try? I'm intrigued by this. Well, the first thing I started looking where I was going to stay, um, mm -hmm. what's nearby, you know, what can I run to? Where can I run around there? And there was, of course, a bowling alley. I know that okay. sounds really. Funny. <laughs> we have bowling alleys here, but they're rubbish. You know, they're like like a pastiche of a bowling alley. But okay. I want to go to an authentic bowling alley. Okay. Um, and there's loads of food and things that I want to try. Okay. I just want to, I want to feel it. You know, I want to feel what it's going to be like to be there in America. Okay. It's going to be really nice to be back there. It's been a long time since I've, I've been to the States. Here, here's the thing that I've always find interesting. It's like Boston is, is historic. Uh, it's one of America's oldest cities. But a lot of that history revolves around revolution against great britain so i always like wonder like how as as the uk is now still and has been for a very long time a great ally of the united states you know like how, how does that play like same thing like when hamilton goes to the uk like how does like that resonate for you guys over there um i think with with the uk we we often think of ourselves as this kind of little island you know it's it's so small it's so tiny you can drive from like one end all the way to the other in a day you know it's it really is that small um but for me i've always been very interested in american culture anyway when i grew up um a lot of my favorite groups bands um someone like de la soul for example you know a young ed was listening to three feet high and rising um on his record player and that's what America for me has always been where all of my influences are. People like Lil Richard, um, Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee, all the early rock and roll was all <laughs> from America. The so a lot of my influences are there. So in terms of um, in terms of history, there, yeah, I, 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 I'm firmly very European. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a European guy. That's what I'll be saying. 
Okay. <laughs> so, so like, probably you're not going to go and watch, like, the Boston Tea Party reenactment. <laughs> No, I, 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 I shall. I shall maybe uh, try and get on one of those uh, land to sea vehicles okay. that I've been I've been seeing in all the videos. Everybody keeps telling me that I've got to go on one of those. If I go to Boston, I have to go on one of these land to sea craft. So yeah, I've got to do that as well. Yeah, I don't know. Do people do that around Boston? I just feel like the water is going to be very cold. I'm 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 not I'm not sure that's the best idea for April in Boston. <laughs> At least I think the weather's going to be a little bit more similar to what I'm used to here okay. Um, okay. in the UK. Yeah. I mean, at the moment it's really really windy. Mm -hmm. I've got some more miles to run later, and I'm looking outside saying, you know, when does this end? When does the rain end? Mm -hmm. When does it get dry? When can I put the short shorts on again? Probably not for another two months yeah <laughs> yeah all right well before we get deeper into it let's make sure we say hi to some people in the chat we got danny running with sort of saying good morning from california co and ed and then sean who is in boston says we will accept you with open arms ed so, awesome thank yeah. you sean <laughs> and, and calvin says get the touristy stuff out of the way like bagels duncan and mildly prevalent boston <laughs> uh yeah you could probably skip that part that's that's okay um kim says hey ed but make sure to check out mit too isn't that kind of related to your job teaching or working in it no absolutely yeah i've definitely got to get a picture of myself near harvard and then <laughs> i can insert that into every assignment brief that i give out where it says that you need to use harvard referencing and there'll just be a picture of me going, you know like this or something i can i can copy that in as a template or something and use it for every assignment brief <laughs> awesome awesome um all right Let's see. What else we got here? Yeah, New Betra says you got to try the duck boat. A duck boat. That's the ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody's told me that I've got to go on one of those duck boats. You know, so, I, mean, um, I went to Boston a lot growing up. I grew up in the East Coast, which wasn't super close in New Jersey, but um, bowling is huge in New Jersey. But um, as an adult going to Boston, I don't think I've ever noticed the duck boats. I'm not even sure what you're... I'll have to look that up. I don't. I don't know. I, I think know. it's like an 80s kid thing of watching like 80s action stuff. Like you always want to go on a an amphibious vehicle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Well, that, that'll be fun. And then so um, what day do you get in for Boston? Um, I, I, I think I arrive on the Sunday on the 6th, 16th. Yeah, that's the day before. You're cutting it close. Yeah, I, I get there. I can I can have a couple hours of rest, and then then uh, I'll just have some energy gels, and I'll be ready to run around and look at uh, take in as much of the marathon as possible. Yeah, um, what's your what's your plan for watching the race? Um, I th I'm over with Puma, um, mm -hmm. so I think they've got some places for me to go, and then they're going to sort of cart me around different areas um, so that I can. I think there's a really good view of the finish, certainly, and possibly parts of the start. And then uh, I know there's like a, a route you can follow um, to get through to all the major sections. So oh, okay. um, I'll probably need to wear some, you know, carbon plated shoes to maybe run between the different bits. Um, we'll have to see. It's all going to be exciting and very new. And I'll probably have to be on my toes a little bit. Well, that's cool. But I mean, that won't be too, too much longer, though, after your marathon, because yours is coming right up. That's right. Yeah. In Brighton. Um, I'm looking forward to that now. Uh, fortunately, it appears the government have managed to come to some sort of agreement with the rail workers here in this country, because um, I don't know if you guys over over that are listening out there um, know what's been going on in the UK. There's been lots of strikes um, mm -hmm. involving healthcare, education, you name it, uh, whatever service it is, there's been a strike. So they've averted a train strike right on when the Brighton Marathon is. So that's going to make it much easier for me to be able to get there um, in good time and then sort of take in a bit of Brighton, get some rest, get ready and uh, to uh, see what I can see what I can do over the marathon distance. Awesome. How, well, how, how's your training going? How are you feeling? Yeah, it's been terrible, Mike. It's, <laughs> it's been absolutely terrible this year. <laughs> this year has been really tough. Um, my family have been quite ill. Um, okay. My little boy's been ill as well. It's been a really, we, we've lost a couple of family members as well oh, over the last yeah. year. It's just been a, a really difficult time. And I've been trying to get in 
miles where I can, mm-hmm. um, getting the long runs in at least, you know, and then just keeping myself in reasonable uh, fitness. But yeah, it's just everybody seems to have really bad bronchial sort of uh, chesty coughs and stuff over here at the moment. I think it's probably partly due to the weather. It's just been really bad, really damp and and generally um, not conducive to getting a lot of uh, good runs in, good quality runs at least. Very windy as well. Can't get any speed work done. There's just nowhere that's sheltered enough for me to do it. So I think I'm, I'm as, in as good a fitness as I've been probably for the uh, since uh, last year, really, just before I got COVID last, uh, mm-hmm. last year in 2022. So... We'll give it a shot. I think I'm good for my target. Um, I'm going for about 3.15. Okay. If I, can, if I, I think I can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I just did the Weymouth half at the weekend. Yeah. Weymouth half oh, and I uh, had a 1.33 in that. So, and, and that was after doing a gig the night before. <laughs> like five yep. hours sleep. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it always makes sense. Races are on the weekend and gigs are going to be on the weekend too. So it's just kind of going to come with the territory. But it always seems like you have... A particularly strenuous gig the night before a race. Yeah, sometimes it works really well. It's almost like a warm up. I did Bristol um, mm-hmm. a couple of years back, and yeah, literally had five hours sleep, went and did the race, and yeah, one thirty one, which is the best I've managed over the half. So I don't know. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I'm not sure. I think it's a bit mental, really. It, it's it's in here most of the time. You can make yourself do it. Sure. As you were saying during during your marathon, you know, yes. you will do it. I I, I must do it. I, yeah. I will. <laughs> awesome. Um, what about for Brighton? Are you, do you have a, anything scheduled the night before? Um, no, nothing at all. I will be just lying completely still, like <laughs> resting as much as I possibly can. Uh, yeah, no gigs, nothing. Yeah, I'll just be uh, resting and getting myself uh ready listening to acdc maybe i'll listen to some music instead yeah i mean that that won't get you too excited Uh, it probably will Um, (laughs) (laughs) but i've I've, i did something weird the other day i got an excel spreadsheet it's going to sound really boring to some people but hey if you like stats you're going to enjoy this one so i got an excel spreadsheet and i put in all of my times and then whether i was listening to music whilst i was running Mm-hmm. every single time that i've had access to be able to listen to music during an event i've always run faster so i've always performed better so maybe there's something in that see for me i, I don't run with music during races anymore because the pattern that i found is that when i ran when i raced with music that's when i tended to uh go out a little bit too hot and would finish poorly so like that was like all right i'm just it, it's effective it's too effective for to get me motivated you know Maybe you've got to start off with some Pat Boone and then slowly <laughs> move into some, uh, I don't know, some sort of middle of the road pop. And then at the end, you know, go for some Motorhead maybe or yeah. or something along those lines here, some death metal just on the final mile. Yeah. Um, that's probably, good... that's really a ba- probably a really bad idea. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, That's an interesting progression. But, you know, here's, here was my problem. I would just put on like a playlist and hit shuffle. And so sometimes I'd be racing and I'd just be like, no, no, I don't want that one. Not that one, not that one, not that. And I do that like four or five songs in a row. I'm like, no, yeah. I, I need more. I need something else, you know? And so I was like, this is becoming too much of a distraction. I got to, I got to just run regular. But I, I think Brighton, I think you're allowed to, I think it's all closed road. So okay. it may be, yeah, if I can get a, a three hour, 15 playlist together that okay. slowly okay. goes over the, the yeah. whole progression of the race. Um, yeah, I might give that a go. That feels like a lot of work. I don't, I mean, yeah. I just, a lot I, of work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get some questions from the, from the chat here. Uh, Matt wants to know, Ed, what daily and tempo shoes are you most looking forward to testing this year? And if you had some really good ones that you really loved so far, you can talk, talk about that, but like try to give me like one daily and one tempo that you're super excited about. I'd suggest sort of tempo wise. I'm really enjoying that deviate nitro elite two um, from mm-hmm. Puma. I'm really enjoying that. It doesn't feel, massively like it's like a, a race super shoe so it feels like it fits into that sort of category where you could use it for some training you could race in it as well i think a lot of people probably will um, but i've been, been enjoying that one daily shoes i always look forward to testing the pegasus the the uh, the pegasus every year it's always a fun one to try out have they got it this year or have they you know gone backwards yeah. a little bit um 
The one I've been using most, though, daily wise, is the Invincible um, yeah. the three. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm about eighty miles into this one now, and I've not really had any problems with it. It kind of does exactly what it did before um, for me, which is good because um, it just you know keeps me injury free and it the grip the grip is great. Yeah, so, I mean, I like the three more than the I. I didn't review number two, but I reviewed one. The one I. I think, I mean, I'm sure it was a good shoe. I just couldn't figure it out. Number three, I think I've kind of got it figured out, but I like to use it differently than most people. I like it kind of as a fast, not a speed shoe, but a not a easy, I don't like it. It's not a big cushy max cushion shoe in my mind. So I like it kind of like a little bit up tempo, I guess. Cool, cool. Um, and, but the Pegasus though, this might be the first year where I don't review a Pegasus. I'm just like, come on, it was 40 you could you could have done something big they should have done something big and it's like it looks exactly like the 39 which i thought was better but not great so it I'm, does look I'm, close I'm, doesn't it it I'm, does look very close I'm, I'm i'm highly underwhelmed so far so i'm just like i don't know is this the year where i finally i've reviewed it every single year that i've been reviewing shoes and i'm like is this the year where i don't i don't know so it's tough it's tough tough um calvin wants to know ed uh, how do you decide what to feature on your musical interlude um it tends to be stuff that i've been listening to in the shower <laughs> so um i'll come in from a run and i'm like what do i fancy listening to today you know what what's kind of in my mind and normally it's like kids theme tunes because my you know my son's probably been watching something and and that's stuck in my mind so i I kind of find something and yeah, I'm feeling like this today. Like I'm feeling it, it's raining today, you know, Scott Walker, it could be, <laughs> or um, <clears throat> if I've got to do a, if I've done a speed session, I'm like really kind of full of adrenaline. Um, at the moment it's been, yeah, ACDC and Motorhead really okay. overkill by Motorhead the other day. That, that worked. That those, worked. Are some, those are some good running choices, especially if it's like, if the elements are against you, I feel like that's a good one to really oh, get yeah. created. Andrew WK is a good one as well. Um, I got to meet him years ago when he came over and played in the UK. Um, but his stuff's great. From a really good, like, um, positive mental attitude sort of uh, kind of perspective as well. Mm -hmm. I know he won some sort of award um, over in America. I think it was something to do with, like, suicide prevention and stuff. So he put a lot of uh, work into... Mm -hmm. you know teaching people to you know enjoy what they're doing and kind of that they're worth it you know you've you've so uh, yeah he's really cool he's a cool guy i i feel like his music is complex and sophisticated in a way that's masqueraded by some of his antics and presentation and so it makes it kind of like oh this is like this is not just like pop radio music but it is accessible in a way you know because then there's still like hooks and harmonies and all that stuff but it's also like oh there's layers here you have to think yeah, about yeah <laughs> yeah definitely i think perhaps some of his antics around the first album uh as you say masked a bit of that and people kind of just thought he was this sort of throwaway party guy but actually mm -hmm. he's he's a he's a deep fellow very deep yeah. um all right shannon says yeah ed bud what shoes were worn at the 133 half I know you'll want them over there because you haven't got them yet. But <laughs> yeah. seriously, seriously, guys, they're they're not really anything different to the, oh, really? the two. Okay, really. I don't, I, so You're just disappointed in, like everybody. <laughs> they're, they're they're fine. The upper's not as good as the two. Um, I think it then the two wasn't as good, perhaps as the one. So the the original uh, Vaporfly next percent. So. Yeah, they they were they were fine. My legs were completely trash the next day. Um, I couldn't even make it down the stairs. I've got to be honest. Okay. okay. Um. So what that says about the shoe, I don't know. That hasn't happened to me when I've used the uh, Meta Speed Sky or the Sky yeah. Plus. So okay. Just putting it out there. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I know a lot of people are interested in getting it in the U.S. I mean, I feel like the U.K. has been getting all the major releases before us by like about a month for a long time, especially from Nike. Yeah, uh, that, that's right. I, I think even like today, they've released a load of more colorways of it here. Um, oh, okay. I think yeah, actually, so. I've been this... seeing a lot more on there from some of the U.K. Instagram accounts that I follow. Yeah, yeah t Tim Gross uh, was... Uh, mm. uh, saying earlier on that he tried to get the the pink and the orange yeah 
but he 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 didn't get it. Um, they sold out really fast. So okay, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I'm not a fan of that pink orange one. And just and the and the total orange for the Alpha Flight Two. I'm just like this isn't it. I mean, I'm I'm all for bold colors, but I'm like this isn't working for me. I don't know what it is about it. Oh, uh, Mike, remember that beautiful um, black and orange Flynet, um, the Zoom Fly uh, Flynet. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, such a good that shoe. Black one with it. Yeah, that that's the that for me aesthetically. You know, it don't yeah. get much better than that. Well, it had that stripe along the back too. It was just real. Uh, it was really nice. I mean, I feel like that was for. I mean, for me, it was like peak Nike running. You yeah. know, not that not that the shoes have gotten worse. Well, some of them have, but I just feel like from the designs, I just feel like there were so many. Everything was a hit, and now um, there's a lot where I'm like, <laughs> bold, brave. I appreciate like the attempt, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know if that's really landing. I don't know, maybe I'm just getting jaded or like I'm like I need to be entertained more or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I was kind of feeling like that earlier on. I was thinking a bit about the Alpha Fly too because I watched <laughs> your video uh, with the the fake one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, it got me thinking about that shoe again. Kind of looks like the Starship Enterprise, you know. It kind of looks like saying out of Star Trek, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I like the design of the the number two. It just uh, it just seems like most people don't like it over version one. Which yeah. I'm like, well, I mean, version one was really good. So um, they're not, I mean, they're not all going to be successes, but it's like, if it's not that much better, then why release it? You know, I mean, it's kind of like a remix rather than like a new shoe. You know, they've just kind of yeah. tweaked the levels and added some yeah. more drums yeah. into it or something. Yeah, they, they could have gotten by with a remix rather than a number two. Yeah. Um, all right, here's an important question. CV76 wants to know who's tall because you guys have met in person. I've seen a, a video of that where you guys were at the same race. Who's taller, you or Andy? So basically, if you imagine um, a mouse and then you imagine like um, the Empire State Building, yeah, I'm the mouse. Um, oh, really? It's like literally Andy is absolutely ginormous. Like the guy <laughs> is, he's like up here. You're like, hi, Andy, and he's like, yeah, he's 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 really really tall, okay. um, and his stride. When you see the guy running, yeah, you can like lift lift the leg. It's like he's covering like this huge amount of ground. Well, he's without even trying. Yeah, well, he's talked a lot about how you just can't get a fast cadence, and I'm like, well, if you're, and he he acknowledges it too. If you're taller, you just don't get like a 180 cadence that easy. Yeah. But like you've seen his speeds, it's just insane. Yeah. Like, and part of that is that huge stride. It's just quite amazing to watch him running because he because he, he it's like he's hardly even trying. Um, but he but he is. I mean, he's, yeah, he's yeah. absolutely hammering it. Um, but yeah, the guy is exceptional. You know, in terms of his ability, really. Yeah, the speeds are just really super impressive. But I will say, like, I don't know if it's like the camera angles or what, but it just never seems like he. I'm like, wait. He just did a 20 mile long run with like a thousand feet of gain at like six minute miles. Wait, what? I'm like, but you see the footage and you're like, that six minute miles doesn't, that doesn't look right. But he's just, I think he's just covering so much ground. I like it. I do like it when Welsh runner runs with him because then you get perspective. Yeah. Cause then you're like, oh, okay. See, that's like a, a, a normal, a no more normal sized person running <laughs> Look how many times his feet has to turn over. So, you know, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever met Andy in real life. I tried. I tried to make it happen one time. I wanted to put together um, like a real life Ekaden team for like the Asics Ekaden because we did that virtual one that one year. Yeah. And then I was like, I was trying to work with them and be like, let's let's do a real life one. And he's like, do you want to do the same team? I'm like, yes. He's like, all right, well, then three of you are U.S. and three of you are U.K. Which side wants to go over where? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And that's kind of where the conversation ended. But maybe we could do that sometime. We should. We should do it. We should make it happen. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. I just feel like it usually happens. I feel like we got to plan a little bit further ahead. I think it happens like late in the fall, right? Or almost when it's cold when it happens, I think. Yeah. I remember, uh, was it? Year before last, when I'd when I busted my shoulder, um, it was around then. So is that like October? Oct yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll Somewhere? I'll have to I'll have to uh, go. We could just go look back at when we did it last year because I think it's about the same time every year. So, um, let's see. 
Uh, JC says, I would never want to be photographed between Ed and Andy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, Simon Horn says, hi, I have a question. My father, 67 years old, is making his marathon comeback after 25 years. He's a heel striker. Which marathon shoe would you recommend? He did all his running in Nimbus 25. Thanks so much. What do you think? I'll let you have that one first. Ooh, um, so he's doing all his runs, Nimbus 25. Okay. I mean, I would so say it looks like we're, well, we're looking for something, I guess, slightly along the same lines, but lighter. Maybe. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Nimbus 25, you know, if this is your first marathon after a while, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, if it's if it's working on the longer runs, you know, I guess it's how you feel, isn't it? If you're if you're going to run one of those longer runs and it's it's feeling great, or you're coming back thinking, I just lugged a a, a lot of foam around with me. Do I need all of it? Mm -hmm. That's kind of why I'm keep thinking at the moment, Mike. Like, do I need all that foam? Well, I'm not sure. You know, um, yeah, maybe even just go with it. That's what I would go, say. Grab a grab a new grab a fresh pair, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that like there's the super blast is an option too. Um, or if he wants to go with carbon, like a SC Elite or like a SC Trainer, that'd be a nice one. Um, just depending on what kind of like the the goals and kind of uh, expectations are. But I think that the Nimbus. I saw a lot of people in Japan in Tokyo running in the Nimbus Twenty Five because they had a they had like a Tokyo edition Nimbus Twenty Five, uh -huh. and I saw a lot of people buying them at the expo and then racing in them the next day and i was like mm, that's a lot of faith <laughs> but i mean maybe they already had a nimbus 25 and they knew um what are you gonna run brighton in do you know have you decided i'm probably tempted by either the the puma deviate nitro elite 2 mm -hmm. um because i just find it doesn't really mess with the way i run if that makes sense it, it doesn't really feel like it's making me run in a in a certain way and i certainly felt like that the vaporfly uh next percent three was doing that the other day i consciously had to run it was making me run a certain way i mm -hmm. i do i don't want to be doing that on a marathon i want to run the way i want to run and right. the way my body wants to run and i think that'll probably be the way or i might just completely go crazy and wear the primax strung and just upset everybody in the whole of the internet and and do that <laughs> i can I, only imagine the fallout if i was to do that um, well run tommy already said that before he even said it he put it in the chase like, <laughs> let's go I don't, I don't you know what i don't know if that's a let's go or like a tisk tisk i'm not sure which one that is run Tommy, you're gonna have to clarify maybe but i'd say i don't think there's anything wrong with it uh my friend ashley mateo ran a marathon and i think she ran new york last no not last year she ran another marathon last year in the Primax Strong, and she was like, "This is great." Um, I mean, like, I'm not trying to break a record or make a team. So, uh, I, mean, it. I, I even think if I were trying to make a U.S. team, I don't think it would matter from a USATF stand standpoint. But you know, if I'm trying to set like a world record or hit a world standard, then maybe it matters. But I'm out there running for fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So enjoying it, you know. Um, I we. A couple of the guys and I went out to twenty mile long run in it, and I kind of came back and went, oh, "My legs feel like completely fine. This is this weird. It's mm -hmm. kind of weird. There is something to that shoe. I'm sure that Adidas are, are trying to figure out exactly what that is about that shoe that does achieve that end end kind of outcome yeah. because it, it does have something else that some of the others don't right now uh, yeah. in terms of just how. I don't want to say the word easy, but how <laughs> it facilitates a certain pace and and it has a really forgiving kind of uh, effect on the legs, certainly the next day. I, I, my, I suspect it has something to do with the double carbon. <laughs> That'd be my guess. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. Heaven yeah. knows. You probably, like, cut it open. There's all this extra, you know, who knows what's in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when I was in Germany, like, they walked us through this hallway and uh there was all these like poster boards and they're like oh yeah 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 you guys cannot like don't don't photograph that you can't photograph it you can't talk about it we we should have put that away and i was like but wow. i already saw it so there's some weird stuff coming really weird i mean i don't know if it'll come or not i think it's all in like the experimental phase yeah it's that that piece they're gonna add in somewhere isn't it here mm -hmm. i don't know what maybe that's p or something i don't know but 
I mean, it's 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 one of the most fun and engaging shoes I've ever worn. It, running. it is fun, but like that's like two opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of like how much road feel do you want on your marathon? Like to go from the deviate is one I feel like one of the more like low slung race yeah. shoes to like the Primax Strung. That's I mean as literally as high as you can go. Right I think now. I'll have to um, check how high the frames of the doors are in my hotel uh, <laughs> before I wear the strung. Because uh, yeah, I'll... that's funny. Fell down a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin Abraham. There's been a lot of people that are very excited about the Primax Strung. He said, "There's so many Primax Strung loyalists in the chat. Gotta love it." <laughs> yeah, I think I've generated a bit of a like a sort of cult following for that shoe now. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I have not tried running in the strong yet. I'm still just on the, like the regular first version, you know, um, man, it was just, I just, I've always loved it. It's just been so much fun. Oh, it is certainly for fun. And that's kind of why we run, isn't it? You know, you want to get enjoyment out of it. And that's mm-hmm. what that shoe really channeled for me. It was just in mm-hmm. general enjoyment. Um, even when you're tired, you can get out and get, get a few miles done. And when you want to do those long runs, you know, it was just really, really awesome. It was certainly speeding up as well. It's just mm-hmm. you can run crazy fast in that shoe if you want to. You've just got to make sure that you're on a nice, even surface, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there if there's a course with a lot of turns, I'm not sure that I would I would pick. That might actually give me a pause. I'm like, oh, how many turns is it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I um, agree. But um, is tell me about the Brighton course. Is it hilly? Is it? pretty flat because by the beach or or what um i think reasonably flat um they have made a few changes to it i think london marathon have actually taken it over um oh, okay the company that were running it i think uh went went bust so uh, i think london have taken that over you can certainly you've got that london kind of organization feel about it all now um so yeah as far as the course goes i don't think it's there's lots and lots of very vicious turns or anything they do use the seafront quite heavily across the course so okay. that'll be good be mainly wind and seagulls that i'll have to watch out for you know um is there any cobblestone as you're going through the town center because i feel like I, there was a lot of cobblestone in the last race that you ran from the footage that i saw yeah it was a little bit in in weymouth um <laughs> And certainly, yeah, back in the Bristol half as well, that's really cobbly. There's, there's some really tight turns on that section. Um, I'm hoping not, Mike, uh, because, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm unstable enough as it is, um, yeah. you know, being being tall. So, uh, Aubrey running. What's going on, Aubrey? He says, really appreciate the love that UK YouTube guys are getting on your lives. Kofuzi, love it. Cool. Have you? Do you know Aubrey? Do you watch Aubrey running, Ed? Yeah, I, I met Aubrey um, back oh. at the A6 10K um, ah, nice. last year in London. Yeah, he's a great fellow. Very cool. Aubrey, we'll have to get you on here sometime too. Um, yeah, because I'm just, you know, with like all these like live streams and happy hours, you know, I feel like, you know, people can't listen to me talk every day. So I got to bring in some reinforcements. I get get some help. So let's, let's bring in some friends. You know, I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad people like Aubrey and everyone in the chat is here too because, you know, it's... it's it's not as fun if the if the if the people aren't chatty in the chat, you know. Um. All right. Adam wants to know: Do you know how many turns there are in London? Do you know if there's a lot in the London Marathon? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, Have you run that one yet? That course? No, I've not. I've not. I've not run the London one. I'm not sure if anyone in chat can let us know. Yeah, I, I have not run that race. Um. Are you going to watch London Marathon this year? Always watch, always try and get in, uh, yeah. Mike, but always fail. Like I know people that have like gone in for the um, the the ballot like for ten years, uh, just never get in. Then you then you always get someone that enters the ballot and they get in like three years in a row or something. And it's like how does that work? Yeah, it's like the Nike sneakers app or something. It's, it, I'm sure yeah. that it's the same technology. You know what I tell people? Like the the joke is, it's it's easier. For someone who is a like an average runner to start a YouTube channel, become YouTube famous, and then get invited to a, a world major marathon than it is to win the lottery in a marathon. Because I've never won a lottery. New York, Chicago, London, Berlin. Like I've never won any of the lotteries on any of them. 
So the only time I, well, Chicago, I've run a lot of like charity bibs and I've now I've run it enough times, but like New York and all those and New York and, um, and Tokyo that I had, you know, I, I had to have someone get me a bib. So that's, that's how weird it is. <laughs> yeah. It just seems super tough to get into those. Um, I don't know what the odds are for London. I can't remember. I did look at it. It wasn't like, it didn't look too bad in terms of the odds, but yeah, I've I've never got it. Like, what's that now? Like six, six, seven times or something. But yeah, I know some people in my local running club that have got in like three years in a row. So yeah, from the ballot. So maybe it may. I don't know. You're just gonna have to get a good for age time because you you can do it as a UK resident. I can't apply for that, but you could. How far are you from the good for age time? I'm not sure what that is. I'm I. I've got to be honest, Mike, the marathon to me is kind of like this mis- mi- mythical thing, this mystical thing. And I think when I've done this, when I've done the, when I've done Brighton, then I'll feel like, oh, hang on, right, I'm, I'm in there now. I've gone through the front door and I'm kind of inside and I'm kind of looking around and saying, oh, okay, this is, this is how it is. And knowing me and knowing my sort of, sort of like obsessive tendencies, I'm probably going to then be like, I can shave off a little bit of time there. I can, I can, I could have done this better. I can do, uh, yeah, yeah. And then I'll just be down the rabbit hole. Yeah. And then, then I'll be really wanting to, to get into London, but doing whatever yeah. I can, you know? Yeah. Come on in. The water's fine. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a rabbit hole to, to chase down. <laughs> I think for my build as well, everyone keeps telling me like I'm, I'm a marathon runner rather than a, a shorter distance. Um, okay. a shorter distance guy because i'm just tall lean there's there's not an awful lot to me i'm just like <laughs> kind of like a wind sock um with with very large feet so yeah i think may, maybe i'm starting to find my calling a little bit that it's maybe you know f- further i'm not sure i want to go further than the marathon I, um, we'll see we'll see yeah i mean i just think that like you know i i i actually prefer the half marathon distance but i just end up not racing it a lot because i'm you know, kind of getting gearing up for marathons because that's where a, a little bit more attention is. Um, and I think that, you know, the half marathon has a major like branding problem. It's called like the half, like half yeah. Iron Man. Like that doesn't sound as impressive as Iron Man, although a half Iron Man is a ridiculous, a long amount of sport, you know? So a half marathon is also a long amount of sport, but like it's called a half. So you're just like, oh, well, why don't you just run a 10K or something? Then you would have been in a real race, you know. It just that's backwards. It just I feel like it's it's very strange. Yeah, there's a workmate the other day said to me, he goes, "Oh, you know, how, how did your marathon go?" And I'm like, I, "I'm doing that in two weeks. I did I did the half marathon. You know, you, it, you, we we all get that, don't we? When it's non-running yeah. people and they're like, yeah. <laughs> they have no idea how far we've got, no idea whatsoever. We could have done a five k, a marathon. They have no idea." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um let's, here we here we got some um ballot stories. Auto VV said went zero for four last year. He applied to Chicago, Berlin, London, Tokyo. See, that's a pretty I think that's a pretty common story. But Silly Caitlin got in. She got into the Chicago lottery for this year. Woohoo, she says, with a happy face emoji. Lee Wilson said, I got rejected from London eleven years straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, eleven. <laughs> Yeah, oh. good for age. It's kind of like you almost want to not do it then. So you've got the, you keep the streak going. Yeah. So yeah 11, well, 12, how far can you go? <laughs> well, you got a good for age. See, that's, that's what you're going to have to do to, to get in. Um, Let's see. There's another one here. All right. Stephen C says London is 305 for a male 40. So you got, you got a little bit, you got 10 minutes to shave, you know, it can be so done. It can be done. Um, and the good news is like, if you don't get it in this age group, the next age group, you know, the time's a little bit more forgiving. <laughs> not, I'm not far away from that age group now. <laughs> uh, Peter Clark says, got into London 2014 on the first ballot attempt and never since. So ran for charity in October and now he's injured and unable to use a good for age place. Oh no. Oh, that's too bad, but you'll be back soon, Peter. Um, all right. Here's a question from Matt Chittam, rambling runner. Which race would you like to perform at with your band at mile 20? Ooh. Um, that's, a, ooh that's a tough one. Um, any marathon, anywhere, where would be the best mm-hmm. place to play? I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to be in New York. Yeah. I'd that's like to be cool. in New York. There, there is a band like around 
like a, there's usually like a really big stage somewhere. Around, I don't know if it's at mile 20 or not. It's after you get back into Manhattan after Queensboro Bridge, but it's not right after. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but that one is definitely well appreciated because you've left like kind of the main area where people were and there's like this giant wall of sound and like radio stations have walls of speakers. You keep going down the street and it quiets down a little bit. And then there's this stage where there's music. So that, that would be that would be the spot for you. That's what you need. So it really pump in around that period to like sort of, mm-hmm. you know, lift everybody up a bit. There you go. Yeah. Energize people. <laughs> um Shan says she's gonna she thinks she's gonna train for a half of the fall because I love training for a marathon, but the race itself takes too long to recover from. I think, I think that's kind of sums it up really well. I do like marathon training. Yeah, I think that's my my thing at the moment where I've got work i've got family stuff going on and it it's trying to get that training in um is proved to be the most difficult thing it's it's not it's not even in my mind that i can't do it like i know i can do it i've done it before i i know that that's possible but it's getting the training in um and trying to keep consistently um healthy and and not picking mm-hmm. up it's just so much so many bugs and viruses and nasty mm-hmm. stuff going around at the moment here mike like i can't even stress like how many people are under the weather and just feeling rough and there's quite a lot of strain on our healthcare system as well here mm-hmm. in the uk so um you kind of feel like a bit of a heel you know by being ill and and putting more strain on that system so yeah that's why you've got to stay outside and just keep running, not not return home or go indoors. Because it's, <laughs> it's much safer that way. Uh, for for the sake of the nation, just keep running. <laughs> keep, keep running for the sake of the nation, um, everybody. What what has your training been like? Are you following a plan? Are you being coached? Are you just kind of like waking up and see what you feel like. What? Tell me a little bit about it. Um, so just slowly um, concentrating on working up those those longer runs. So the long runs, uh, Saturday Sunday time. And just building those up. So I got a few in around 20 miles up to that point. And then this next couple of weeks, I'm just kind of doing what I feel like doing, really. I think <laughs> rather than tapering and saying, I'm only going to run 3.7 miles today or or tomorrow, I've got to do this, you know, just kind of seeing how I feel and just making sure I f- I'm feeling good in my mind, I think, rather than um, my legs feel great now. Um, they didn't feel great on Sunday uh, or, or Monday but they feel really good now. Um, And one of the biggest things I found was where I got past the 20 mile barrier doing some longer runs. I then found, found that suddenly the speed or the the top speed that I can sustain had suddenly improved and increased. And that was just sending my fitness level just much, much higher and back to where I wanted to be. Um, So uh, yeah, in yeah, no no mega plan, very rough plan of of general mileage in the week, but running a lot of those miles at really easy pace. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing, like of mastering like the long run, is that like if you can hold yourself back from overdoing it in the beginning, when you get to those higher mile numbers, you can really push, and then you're like, man, I've been pushing for a long time, and I'm still here. You know, and it's just like it's such a great confidence builder yep. when you can kind of like nail that kind of like slow burn, slow burn, slow burn. All right, now turn it on. That's a good feeling. Uh, Luke Klein said, Ed, it's a freaking awful picture of the UK that you're painting. <laughs> um, I, I, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment um, yeah. here in the UK. Um, and working in in the job that I do, I get to see the impact that it has on young people. Mm. Um, I like the I love my job, and I love when I kind of go to bed, I can put my head down on the pillow and think I've done something really positive for young people. Uh, it keeps me young, and it also makes me if it, it makes me feel fulfilled. And mm-hmm. at the moment, I, young people have got a pretty raw deal. Right yeah, now. yeah. Well, I mean. They got good people like you in their corner, so I, I think that helps. Um, Stephen C says, "Ed, you'll soon be in Boston, and so I guess then you won't have to deal with the British weather. You'll be dealing with New England weather. I, I think it's pretty close. I don't think that that different. It looks very similar. Like even <laughs> temperature, li- li- temperature-wise, yeah. it looks almost exactly the same. But um, yeah, 
but there's a bowling alley, so you know it, that's that's a big big bonus. You know, <laughs> I think you're the first person that I've met that's like, you know what, I can't wait to do when I get to the United States. I want to see a bowling alley. That's pretty unique. Um, it's an interesting kind of culture there. My my younger nephew, who's like my daughter's age, um, is super into bowling, and he for his birthday, his mom got him bowling lessons, and like the lessons, quote unquote, are from like just an older dude at the bowling alley and they pay him like they buy his games while they're doing the lesson and she pays him like five bucks on top of that or something like that it's really bizarre but i feel like that's like like bowling culture in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> uh calvin says boston marathon now nah, i'm here for the bowling alley <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Sean says, you know, come for the marathon, stay for the bowling, they say. That's definitely a Boston thing. Um, they, they, you've, got, you've had Dunkin' Donuts in England, right? Do they have them in Yeovil or no? I don't think they've got that. This y Yeovil's quite agricultural. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the big thing in the UK has always been like roast dinners. So okay. you can have like roast beef and like roast potatoes and roast vegetables. You get the picture. Um, but that's that's the thing here. But yeah, when it comes to like um, foods from like other places and those sort of famous things, I don't know. We get like Krispy Kreme donuts. Do you do you okay. have those over there? Yeah, there's not that many in the Midwest. It's it was more of like a East Coast and um, oh, okay. it's from the Southeast originally. And so like the Midwest, it you know. It exploded and then like uh, low carb happened and then a lot of them went away. And so now it's kind of everywhere you get it, like at the grocery store and like the pre-made boxes. But like I haven't seen like a Krispy Kreme shop in a long time. But they got them there. That's the one thing that you guys got. Well, I feel we, have, like, we have a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Pizzas. I feel like the good ambassador for American culture in like rural England. <laughs> <laughs> It's pizzas all the way, you know. Here, yeah. I, 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 that is my vice. Is yeah, pizza. yeah. I feel um, like uh, Domino's is really big in the UK. Yeah, Domino's is really big. I, I'm keeping them afloat right now. Um, all right. I think with my with my purchases, um, but yeah, we we like the pizza here at, mm -hmm. at the moment as well. I just craving like spaghetti bolognese all the time as well. Okay, what what were we talking? Oh, we were talking. With, I had Tommy Runs on on Tuesday. And we were talking about what people want for like their meal before a marathon, like the night before. And people were saying spaghetti bolognese. And I'm like, that feels heavy. You don't, but like, do you ever have that before a long run? I think my, my biggest problem, Mike, and this is the one, one thing that I perhaps haven't dialed in as much as I, I could have done okay. is what I'm going to do for fueling during the marathon. Okay. Now, um, pasta seems to work really well for me. But my biggest problem is I've got a really fast metabolism, um, so much that I think my my wife uh, would probably consider carrying around like a a snack bar or something for me, you know, to stop me from getting like hangry and <laughs> just just sort of like hitting the wall. So it's going to be really really important as to what I have maybe the day before um, leading up to the marathon. Um, but yeah, yeah pasta uh, probably stick into vegetables and stuff the day before. I think it's okay. going to be the way forward. For a long time, my wife and I were vegetarian. Um, although since our son's been born, um, he he wants to eat meat. He wants sausages. He wants all that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, we've been delving into that a little bit. But for me personally, I feel better when I'm not eating meat. I, I just perform better while I'm running. It's not even close. Okay. Um, interesting. You know, my wife, has started carrying around snacks for me in her purse. That she did that. <laughs> she started doing that when she would be she became pregnant with our first child 11 12 years ago. And uh she would have to have snacks for herself because she found that if she ever got like hungry while she was pregnant, her like heartburn and indigestion would just flare up so she kind of always yeah. had to be snacking the whole day. And I found it really convenient and then when she stopped doing that, I was like, "You don't have any more snacks in your purse? I'm kind of hungry." So she just now always has snacks for me wherever I, but I also carry my own snacks these days too. But like, I'm just always, I'm, I'm, I'm always running low on fuel. I just don't, I, I don't eat enough. I'm, I'm certain of it. Like, I feel like I've never had a dietitian like look at what I do, but I'm like, I'm sure they would say like 
for the amount that you're moving, like you need to be eating more. And I'm like, ah, you know, I try. I just, I guess sometimes I'm busy. It's not that I'm not hungry. I just run out of time. I think a lot of time. Yeah. Time is uh, always the enemy at the moment. Just seem mm -hmm. to, it just seems to evaporate every year that I yeah. get older. It's yeah. I wake up and it's like, Hey, it's lunchtime already. How did that happen? What, yeah. what just occurred? It's like, go out for a run. Oh, it's tea time already. What am I going to have now? You know, but yeah, I think certainly when you're racking up miles, it's like eating when you feel hungry. I, I don't always want to eat when I get back. I don't always feel like I need to do that. I just need to hydrate maybe. Um, but trying to trying to stick to kind of consistency, I think, you know, consi eating at the same time seems to work. So, Yeah, you know, I, I've resigned myself to like drinking calories and stuff. So like I try to just like stash little shakes or carry shakes around with me all the time. It also helps because I'm trying to drink a little bit less coffee in the afternoon. So instead of like reaching for the coffee, I've been trying to reach for like a protein shake or something just because I'm like, I think that overall it'll help my mood. Number two, it should help with, you know, recovery and rebuilding and taking advantage of the work that I'm doing. So I've been trying to just figure it out a little bit better. Just take care of ourselves a little bit more, you know? Um, Ian says, husbands are just another kid. <laughs> yep. I think yeah. I would agree with that. I try not to do that to her. You know, she already does so much, but I'm like, sometimes I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that. Um, Mark Peterson says, do you think you could pull off the Michael Scar Carbo load method? Have you seen, are you familiar with the office, the American version of the office? I've, I've got it. I'm going to admit something to everybody. Now I have never, ever watched the office, either, either the UK one or the American. Oh, really? My, Michael Scott, he, his Carbo load method was to eat fettuccine Alfredo in the middle of a, uh, five, five K race. And he's oh. just starting to <laughs> Um, but you know what though? I've, um, I've only watched like one or two episodes of the British office. I like the American office. I didn't, I'm not like a super fan, but I def definitely enjoyed it. I watched a couple with, you know, Ricky Gervais and I just found his character was like very, so disagreeable that I didn't like the show. And I'm, I'm like, is this British humor? I don't know. I just feel like this character is such a mean person. I don't like him at all. So I couldn't like get into it. That's yeah, hard. there was another show with Ricky Gervais uh, not not long ago, um, and I tried watching an episode of it, and I just yeah, the same reason I just couldn't, I couldn't get in with the character. It was like I don't want to watch this. I don't really like the character at all. So yeah, did it didn't happen. Watch, did you watch the show Idiot Abroad? It was a Ricky Gervais show. No, I've not seen that one. That one was actually fun. I mean, I do think that he's an intelligent and funny guy, um, and those. I mean, he just plays disagreeable characters, you know, but. Um, like in that one, he is like it, it. It sounds like like a YouTube series, but basically, he has a friend who doesn't particularly enjoy traveling and is not all that interested in like leaving his house. He just likes to. He just wants to go home and have dinner with his wife, and doesn't want to experiment with new foods or cultures. He just is like, my wife makes the best food. Same time, same thing, four days out of the week, and that's that makes me happy. And he takes that guy, and he sends him to all these places to experience all these things. And sometimes, like he'll set it up so that way he has to try like super crazy stuff that like tourists probably wouldn't normally do but i don't it know it does that, sound like a youtube series <laughs> yeah but, i mean ricky gervais is, is sometimes he's a little bit mean but like sometimes like it actually ends up being pretty good television that's a, that's an older show but it's always a weird thing with ricky gervais um I, I was never sure if it was true but apparently he was the manager um before they got really famous of the of the uk band suede it, they okay. were like a really big deal like over here in, in the early 90s. Okay. Um, and he was like their manager for a while or something. It's really can you, bizarre. Can you imagine if you had to deal with him like on a contract basis? He's like, hey, here's what the here's what the boys are going to need. And you're gonna be like, okay, Ricky. Like that, that, that just be, sounds like a <laughs> real uh, strange. Uh, could have made a great YouTube series, uh, like, like a film or something. <laughs> make a very, pretty funny show too. Um. Eliza says, Idiot Abroad was amazed. Poor Carl. Yeah, that was the guy's name, Carl. Such a good-hearted guy. He was always up for trying anything, even though he didn't really want to do any of it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, Matthias says, Carl with a C or Carl with a K. Idiot Abroad is good. Yeah, you know what's funny is like th that's one of those shows where I'm pretty sure I, like, I watched it with my wife, and I'll like make a reference to it to my wife, and she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. 
And I'm like, we watched this show. Like it was like an entire series. We watched all the episodes. And she's like, doesn't ring a bell. And then I'll pull up like on Netflix. I'll be like, do you see, look, look at this. You don't recognize anything. She's like, nope, not ringing a bell. My, my wife just, I don't know. She just doesn't watch TV. I like St- Stephen C's there. He's mentioning only fools and horses. It's probably my favorite TV <laughs> show of all time. Um, it's got everything. It's kind of like a, a comedy sitcom, but there's some actual character sort of development as it goes through all the different series. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly um, it could have been Del Boy from Only Fools and Horses that that sold you those those <laughs> alpha flies. <laughs> um, I'll have to check that one out because I'm not familiar with Fools Only Fools and Horses. I'll have to check oh, that. Oh, it's, it's absolute genius! It's got everything in it, Mike. It's one of those shows where you can. Um, you're laughing along with it and then suddenly they can turn it and it's really sad. Like they, okay. they just have this amazing ability to to switch it around. It's a okay. really great show. All right. Yeah. I um I'll I'll have to check that out. But you know, like I was listening to a podcast today on my run. Uh I was listening to Ali on the Run show. She was asking Erica Kemp, like, what's what TV show are you watching now? And I was like, I just don't watch TV. I don't not anymore. Like now that I'm an adult with like kids and stuff. I mean, I feel like if I didn't run so much, I could probably watch TV. But like, I've kind of taken all that time time and like put it at the running, so I don't watch that much anymore. So now it's going to be like, all right, do I have a flight coming up, or is there bad weather coming, and I could save it for treadmill? So like, that's like that's like the only that's the only time I watch stuff on TV. Yeah, we seem to just watch a lot of streamed material now, and mm-hmm. my wife just watches Pride and Prejudice uh, just like over and over again. The the <laughs> version with uh, Colin Firth. I think she must have watched that like 40 times. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, why are you watching this again? She's like, I like it. Oh, yeah. I, I like it. I know what's going to happen. You know, it's there's no sort of, ter- nothing really terrible happens in it. It's just. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, I mean, you get people like what they like. Um, it's kind of like, I mean, well, like some kids like to watch the same like YouTube videos over and over again. And I'm like, oh, like rewatching like kids YouTube videos like that's like torture to me. Yeah, yeah. My, my daughter's really got into Brad Hall recently because she's she, my daughter's kind of turned into a sneakerhead, uh, which is probably it's probably my fault in fairness. Yeah. Yeah. But I said to her, have you seen this guy, Brad Hall? He's amazing. You got to check him out. And now she 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 tells me, "Oh, Brad Hall's got a new video. He's done a new short." And it's like, "Yeah. What have I done? <laughs> what have I done?" You know, I I keep trying to um try to find a way to meet Brad Hall because like I don't know if he still does, but at one point like he either lived or like spent a lot of time in Chicago and like one time he made a video of uh like a 360, like a triple GoPro rig, a, a hands-free triple GoPro rig. I know that video very well, Mike. And he ran around the track on it or something like that. And he got a haircut in it and he ran around the track in it. And I'm like, oh, that's the track that I run it. I know that. And then he did another one where he uh, was testing the, like, the Nike Run app and he just drove around in it a bunch to see what the Nike yeah. app would do. I'm like, oh, I know exactly where she's driving. Uh, so I was, so I've, I've never been able to like get in touch with him. But I mean, we've like, the kind of interacted in comments here and there every once in a while, but like, I don't think he knows who I am, but he's a funny guy. I didn't know he was I, like, I didn't know he was still making content. He doesn't show up in my feed anymore. I don't have yeah, to go for him. I, th- I think he might have been like really ill or something because oh. he, he, he didn't do any videos for a long time. And when he's come back, he certainly doesn't seem himself. Like he seems oh, like he's okay. been sick maybe, but if you can do a video, Mike, that would be like <laughs> one of the most legendary videos, uh, collab videos ever. Okay. Uh, Kafuzi and Brad Hall would be, yeah. yeah. I can't even. I can't even tell you how amazing that would be to to have that. That would be a lot of fun. I mean, like, like two of the more awkward guys on the internet getting together. What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, his his special GoPro rig where he had like one out out here and one yeah. behind him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a that was an incredible video. <laughs> he had to a... stop to get people to like re like move his GoPros back around for him. <laughs> that's like a six year old GoPro. That's like a six year old video at this point or five year five years. Oh man, <laughs> that's funny. That that brings me back. That's memories. All right. Well, I, we're just about at an hour today, and man, this time flew by fast. A lot of people have said that. Absolutely, um, flew by fast. So we'll definitely have to have you come back on again. Maybe after 
Well, let's let's see. Hopefully, I'll run into you in in Bo- I think we'll be at some of the same places in Boston, looking at your schedule and mine. So hopefully, we'll be able to get um, at least a hello and a hug, you know. Absolutely. And then um, we'll have to have you back on after your American adventures to see what you thought of Dunkin' Donuts and bowling, you know. So we, the people got to know. We got We got We set it up. Then we got to deliver for the pay for the payout later. So I'll have you back. I should really go to an Irish bar as well, shouldn't I? At some point, you know, <laughs> there's bound to be there's there's loads and loads. That's one thing that we see all these films. You know, in Boston, there's always like this Irish bar. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna have to go to one of those. Yeah, go, like an Irish cop bar. You know, I feel like that that'd be good. Be like and have some Guinness because <laughs> it's good for you of course that's why medicinal purposes only everybody i'm not promoting uh that you go and drink alcohol it's very yeah. bad you should not do that yeah it's a it's a it's a good recovery beverage all right man well thanks so much everybody everybody knows where to find ed he's on youtube at ed bud also ed bud with two d's uh edd bud uh on instagram so you guys can always find him there um thanks again ed Mike, it's been a real pleasure talking to you and answering the questions from the viewers uh, in the comments. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. We'll see you tomorrow, same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.